Hi friends, it's Nicole Steele of The Joyful Stamper coming to you with a, at a different time today. Last week it was because of eye doctor appointments from my daughters and now my middle daughter Caitlin has an AP exam at 2 o'clock so I need to I need to save the bandwidth for her. So we're going to jump right in and get started and if you have comments or questions Feel free to type them. I will see them. I'm checking them. And hello, Marianne. Thanks for joining me. <laughs> I love the company. <laughs> um, and if you're watching this on the replay, also thank you for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time out of the day to come stamp with me and hang out. So today, you know, it's graduation season, it's wedding season, and gift cards are a really popular option to give at that for those occasions. So I thought it would be fun to make a gift card folio and it ties so I'm untying it right now and I'll show you it opens up so you can put the gift card in here and on this side there's a little note card so you can stamp something on there and write a little message on there for the recipient and I thought this was such when I give gifts especially gift cards I like to decorate the packaging or do something a little fancier because the ones that come in the store I mean they're nice but I'm a stamper. We're stampers. So let's make it a little bit more fun for them to get and for us to give, right? So we are going to use a really popular suite, the Painted Poppies one. And in particular, we're going to use the elements. And this pack is a really good deal. But we're going to jump in and get started. So that's what you're here for, to see the stamping. So what we're starting with is this is old olive cardstock. And it's cut to four inches by ten and a quarter inches. And we are going to score this. So I'm pulling out my scoreboard and I'm getting my bone folder. And I am going to score at two and a half inches. And I'm going to score at five inches. And then five and a quarter inches and seven and three quarters. Now, for you new stampers, let me just tell you what the scoreboard is. Typically we would use our paper trimmers and you would have to keep sliding score, sliding and remeasure score. But when you have a scoreboard, it's got one eighth of an inch grooves already going all the way across this board so that you don't have to move your paper. You lay it down and you just score and you don't have to shift your paper at all. So it makes it go a lot quicker and it makes it so that your paper doesn't shift either. So we've got our score lines there. And the next thing we're going to do is we want to cut some notches into these two end pieces right here. Now you can use a circle die. There's the layering circles dies that would work. Or you can use a circle punch. Our current, we have some current circle punches. Um, one and a half inch would probably be the one I recommend. And you just, you're only going to go punch halfway. So insert your punch right in the middle, halfway, and just give it a squeeze. Now the reason we're making these little circle, half circle notches is so that it's easier for the person to remove the gift card and the little note that you leave them. Okay, now what we're going to do is fold in on the score lines. And because I want very sharp folds, I'm going to use my bone folder to make sure I really get a good crisp crease on that. It looks like, let me line that up a little bit better. There we go. And then we have the two middle ones. There's so much going on at my house today. So if you hear things, um, we our next door neighbor is having trees cut down. So there's chainsaws going. My husband is having conference calls for his work because he's still working from home. My daughter's stressed out because the AP exam is this afternoon, <laughs> so she's walking around. She's walking around mumbling facts to herself. Reminds me of me when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Taking it very seriously, but that's good. Okay, so now we're going to pull out our pieces. Now let me show you. This is the Peaceful Poppies Elements Pack. This is a brand new package. You get a lot in here. And I believe it's only $6.50 in the mini catalog. And I'll show you an opened pack. A lot of them I've used. So these are punch-outs. 
and these pieces, which I'm also going to use, I don't know if you could see them, they are vellum, and they have a white embossing on them, and we're going to use those on this project, and then we have watercolor pieces, which I'm going to use on my next project, and they also have images embossed onto them too, which resist the ink, and you'll see that, and you also get a sheet of these black elements, which I have used all of mine, but they have embossing on them too, and they're circles and scallops, and it's just really, really pretty, and you get a lot for the price. Hi, Kim. So this is the Painted Poppies Designer Series paper. It has been a hit with customers and with demonstrators. Very, very popular. Oh, sorry, before we glue that down, we're gonna go ahead and cut some ribbon to wrap around this. We wanna put our ribbon underneath the decorative front. So you can use crinkled white seam binding ribbon. And I ran out of the current stuff, so I had to dig way, way into my old retired stash to find this ribbon. But the only difference between this old ribbon and the crinkled seam binding that is in the, cat the catalog now is that this is a little bit wider. And to make it crinkled up, I'm just gonna crumple it and roll it between my hands just like this. Rolling it into a little ball, look at that. So when you get the crinkled seam binding ribbon, if it's not crinkly enough for you, just do what I just did and it'll work. And now I'm going to take some snail to adhere this down to my card, card folio. So I have the folio closed. You can see these edges are put in and this is gonna go like this. So I'm gonna run some snail right down the middle of the front cover. And I'm going to wrap my ribbon around there, making sure that the tails are even so that I can tie it evenly. And I'm gonna stick it down. The great thing with the snail adhesive is that you can lift up the ribbon and reposition it if you need to. Okay, so we have that. And the next thing I'm going to do is tape down my inside. And I'm going to use tear and tape if I can find it in my drawer of adhesive here. Hmm. I'm not seeing it, so we are going to use some fast views. And I'm going to go right on the edge there. Okay, and then I'm going to fold that in. And then this side. I'm going to add some fast views. Now in the new catalog, Stampin' Up's coming out with a new adhesive. It's called Stampin' Seal Plus, and it's meant to replace the fast views, which was really popular, but some people had trouble with the tape um, catching. So Stampin' Up! went back to the drawing board, redesigned it, and came up with Stampin' Seal Plus. Now we can go ahead and add our Painted Poppies Designer Series paper. Now you can use this side if you like it, or you can use the other side, because the paper is double-sided, and it's 12 by 12 sheet. This particular piece of DSP is cut to 2 and 3 eighths by 3 and 7 eighths. Now I know some of you might be grumbling, I don't like working with one eighth of an inch, blah, blah, blah. But, and I get it, <laughs> but the trimmers are marked with an eighth of an inch and you can certainly change the, the measurements if you want. If you want to work in quarter inches, just go ahead and do that. Two and a quarter by three and three quarters would do the trick. Okay, next thing we're going to do is stamp congrats and I'm using seriously the best I love these chunky fonts I've said that before so if you've been watching you know and I'm going to use the grid lines here on my grid sheets to make sure that I line my sentiment stamp up straight on my block okay looks good now I'm going to heat emboss in white embossing powder the sentiment on this black strip. There we go. Now if you have the Peaceful Poppies Elements pack, you could punch out one of the black banners from the sheets and stamp right on that and heat emboss it. But like I said, I ran out and I'm going to go ahead and use this. So 
I'm going to take Versamark. This is the workhorse ink because it does so much stuff. It embosses. It creates watermark backgrounds. Back in the days when we had chalks, stamp and pastels, you could stamp your image in Versamark and you could swab chalk over it and it would stick to the stamped verse the Versamark stamped image and it would create this really soft halo all around it. I mean it truly is the workhorse. A black ink pad and Versamark ink pad. If you're gonna start with two ink pads, those are the two that I would start with. Okay, flick it off. And it looks like I still have a little bit on there, so I'm gonna take a paintbrush and just brush that off like that. Okay. Always, always close your embossing powder lid before you heat emboss. Otherwise, it could go everywhere. I have bumped it. I have blown it everywhere with my heat gun. <laughs> okay, let's watch it melt. Gorgeous. Now, you might be looking at this and saying, but you went off of the paper a little bit, that G's cut off. I personally am not bothered by that. If you are, just simply cut your cardstock a little bit wider. And if you're gonna use the Peaceful Poppies Elements, it does cut it off a little bit. So you'll either just have to live with that, use a smaller sentiment stamp, or just cut your own paper like this. Now I'm gonna flag these like the original. Mine just won't have that nice, shiny, black embossed border on it, but you know what? We're creative types, and although we want all the shiny, new, pretty things, sometimes you just can't have them right now, or you ran out, and that's where you have to get inventive and creative, and, and that's fine. That's totally fine. Okay, what I'm going to do is I want to curl the top points of these, so I'm going to use my bone folder. And just use it to run it over those points. There we go. I love that saucy little flip it gives. This is for the inside of our gift card holder and you can certainly stamp on that if you want but I'm very wordy and I like to write long messages. So my um, card is, my card needed, I needed lots of room on it to push I may have cut, I may need to trim this a little bit. Let me get my trimmer so I can make it fit. There we go. Now it should fit in there. No, it's still not. Well, we won't mess with that. I'll trim it down to get it to size. Okay, so we have this and from the painted labels dies, which is the die set that coordinates with the Peaceful Poppy's um, suite. Um, I die cut with this pretty little scalloped border out of Poppy Parade cardstock, and I'm going to glue it to the back side, the back edge of this congrats. So I'm just going to take some snail and I'm going to run it down the edge, and then I'm going to attach this. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Mom. Thank you guys for not leaving me here alone to stamp and talk to myself. <laughs> Feel free to comment and chat back. I look. This is another one of the, the painted pop, peaceful poppies. Oh my goodness, so many peas. This is another one of the peaceful poppies elements that's the black and part of the black embossed sheets. So this is a pretty circle. And I punched out a ton of pieces here. But the ones I'm going to use are this one right here. And I'm going to get one of the vellum sheets and I'm going to punch out this one. I'll put it on this so you can see it. So these are the two pieces I'm gonna use, but what I'm gonna do with this vellum, I'm gonna take a Stampin' Blends alcohol marker, and this is Dark Poppy Parade, and I'm gonna use the brush tip, and there's white embossing on one side of these vellum pieces. I'm going to flip it over to the back side, and I'm actually going to color, I'll do it on here so you can see it. 
I'm going to just quickly, lightly, imperfectly color the flowers. I just want to dab on a little bit of this Poppy Parade color. Now we have Stampin' Right markers that are water-based dye. You could use these on you could use those on vellum, but the thing is they don't dry very quickly at all. Whereas because this is alcohol ink, it'll dry very, very quickly. I mean think of rubbing alcohol. That you know you probably have some in your bathroom and how quickly that dries and evaporates. Well, that's what's in these Stampin' Blends. So that's what makes them ideal to color on vellum. You can run your finger over it, see, and it doesn't come off. It dries instantly. And you could see how it just gives a really soft touch of color and it's gonna go behind that and I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's glue this on. And I'm gonna put that along the left side of my gift card folio. Okay, and I'm going to use snail to glue this on. I find that snail doesn't really show through too much on vellum because a lot of people ask, you know, what should I, what kind of adhesive should I use with vellum? Because you can see through vellum. And I find that snail actually works pretty good. I don't think it shows up all that much, shows through all that much. See what I mean? I don't think you can really see that at all. And even if you could see it a little bit, that's going to cover it. So you can use snail. You can also use a sponge and this liquid glue to dab it on the back of the vellum piece too. So that's always an option. Now I'm going to, I'm going to use snail for this too. And run it down the center. And I'm going to put it on like that. And then the last thing I can do is tie this in either a knot or a bow. It's entirely up to you. I just, I love how crinkly this ribbon is. Love it. And all I did was crumple it up with my hands. Okay, that's the first little gift fo gift card folio. So you can make up a bunch of those super quick. And the Country Club Designer Series paper has a lot of plaids and argyles and greens and blues in there. So if you wanted to make it for, let's say, a guy, and you know the guy's not really interested in all these scallops and crinkled bows and flowers, you could use the plaids and argyles in that Country Club pack of paper. And that would work really good too. So that is project number one with the Peaceful Poppies Elements. I have a second project that shows a little bit of water coloring. And I don't have a finished card to show you because <laughs> I'm doing this one on the fly. So we'll see how it goes. We, I, have an idea, I have an idea in my head. So it is, sorry, it, I bumped that camera. So it is going somewhere. Um, I just don't know where yet. So thanks for joining me to see how it's going to turn out. Okay. Let's think for a minute. Blackberry Bliss cardstock. Okay, so this Blackberry Bliss cardstock was cut to five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, scored down the middle at five or at four and a quarter inches. And I'm going to fold it in half. Okay. And then I use that exact same Painted Poppies Designer Series paper pattern as I used on my gift card folio. And you could use this side, but I'm going to go ahead and I am going to use this side. And I'm going to glue it this way, but I think, hmm, I'm not crazy about that big white space there, but we're going to go with it. And let's just add it using liquid glue for this. So are you guys excited about the new catalog? I am. I not only made my list up for June 3rd, but I also have a bunch of ideas for classes brewing in my head because I'm going to start something new. I have a Facebook group that I'm going to create for online card classes. It's going to be completely free. I'm going to post the instructions. There'll be the videos, everything, and I'm going to offer the cut cardstock kits. Um, That'll be the, the one part that you can purchase. But if you don't want to buy it, you don't have to. You can totally make all the projects from my online class with what you already have. I just, I just want to share. 
I just want to share the fun. Okay, so these are the watercolor element, the watercolor pieces from um, the Paint Peaceful Poppies Elements Pack. I punched out several of them, and I'm going to show you how I watercolor. This is the cardboard backing from the Peaceful Poppies Elements. So when you get it, it's shrink-wrapped in plastic, and all the elements sheets are stuck onto this so that they don't bend during shipment. Well, I'm going to watercolor right on this. These pieces have an embossing on them. So you know how I embossed that sentiment on the gift card folio? The same thing was done on this watercolor paper. So when I watercolor over it, it's actually going to resist. The embossed parts are going to resist the ink so that design will show through. So I'm going to use an aqua painter. These were on the Stampin' Up! Retired list and actually sold out, but they're actually not going away. In the new catalog, they're coming back and they're gonna be sold in a package of three. And instead of them all having the same brush tip, the package of three, each brush is going to have a different tip. So you can do all kinds of different watercolor techniques with the brush size that suits that technique best. And that's just, it's, it's so much nicer. So we're gonna use Blackberry Bliss, and we're going to use Old Olive, and we're going to use Rich Razzleberry here. Let me get these extra pieces out of the way. Okay. All right, we're ready to go. These flowers, one of them I'm gonna paint with Blackberry Bliss. So let's open this up. And there are two ways you can get some ink in here. You could take a reinker and put a few, squeeze a few drops in there and then mix it with water from your, water, from your aqua painter. Or you could squeeze the ink pad together like this and that'll put some ink in the lid. So. Now I'm going to squeeze some water out of my aqua painter into the lid and I'm going to mix it up. Okay, that is a dark, dark, dark purple. Let's see how it goes. Ooh. I'm liking this. Okay. All right, we have that one. And now I'm going to switch to Rich Razzleberry for that. When I'm watercoloring, I find it handy to keep a paper towel nearby because to clean my brush, you don't need a separate brush for every color. Just squeeze some water out and swipe it back and forth until it comes out clear. And then you're ready to move on to the next color. So I'm going to add some water to this Rich Razzleberry ink pad because I want it to be a little bit lighter than the Blackberry Bliss. And now I'm going to add some color to this flower. And let's add a little bit more. Hi, Joanne. Thank you for joining me today. Did you finish your card kits that, um, that you got? Did you put them all together? I know you showed me one of them. And did you have fun with it? That's the first time I did something like that. So I'm interested in your feedback. Now you can lay your color with watercolors when, when you're watercoloring. The trick is you have to let each layer dry. So it's a way that you can add a different color if you want, but the important thing is you need to let that layer dry. Otherwise the colors will start blending together because they're still wet and they you know can move around and you'll end up with mud. And we don't want our flowers to look like mud. I grow ugly flowers, but I'm not gonna paint or stamp ugly flowers. Now I do want to make this a little bit darker, so I'm going to take my heat tool. So if you don't want to wait, you can use your heat tool to dry them. Let's make sure these don't blow away. And because these pieces are small, they won't take long to dry. Okay, that's getting hot, so that's enough. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to add more rich razzleberry to this. Oh, 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 so you're back home, Joanne. Okay. But you're busy. Yeah. Well, hopefully you got a lot of rest when you were out of town. Rest and quiet. I know that's what you were looking for. Okay, I like that darker shade there. So I just dried it, and then I went over it again with the same Rich Razzleberry ink. Okay. Now we're going to move on to Old Olive to paint our flowers here. Now do you see how the ink, um, 
the embossing, I'm, I'm sorry, the embossed lines resisted that ink. They didn't take on the color. And you can actually take your paper towel and just dab it to get even more off if you want. That's another watercoloring trick. If you lay down too much color on any part of your image, just take a paper towel and dab it. And the paper towel will absorb that extra color. Now we're going to do old olives. Add some water to that lid. Make sure we're on the embossed side here. And I'm going to paint some on. Gosh, I love this. And I'm not really, I'm not an artist. My daughter, Caitlin, draws so, so good. She's actually sold a number of her pieces, just wasn't even intending to, but she posted them on Instagram because she has an account created just to show her art. And she sold them. I mean, it was so cute how excited she was. I was so happy for her. That's always so affirming when you're like, somebody likes my art. They really, really like it. Okay, so feel free to talk during this live. Say, that's ugly, um, I really like that, or that looks too hard, or I wanna make that. I would welcome the conversation. Okay, so we have our card base. I glued the DSP down. These dies, or these pieces are from the Painted Poppies label set, which is the same die set that I used to die cut this scalloped piece right here. It has labels, and I die cut them from Whisper White, and it looks like I've got a little bit of ink on them for my watercoloring. That's okay, because I'm gonna do something um, when we're finished with this card that will make that blend right in. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue these down. And I'm gonna glue them flat, because I'm gonna raise my flowers. And I'm gonna stagger and overlap these. Now this is one part of card making you don't want to overthink. Don't try to get perfect placement. It will take you forever to make a card. Just lay it down. Let me put, fix this one. There we go. Just lay it down. Chances are, when you go with your instinct, it's gonna be the right one, and you'll be much happier with the results. I've been stamping for 20 years, and that is a truth that I have found to be true over and over. Okay, I just repeated myself and was very redundant in what I was saying. Okay, let's look for some dimensionals. Okay, the mini dimensionals I am going to put on the backs of these leaves because they are so skinny and tiny. But the flowers, I am going to use full size dimensionals. Let me open a new package here. It's always so exciting to open a new package of something, don't you think? I find it very satisfying to use something up like a spool of ribbon or um, a container of embellishments. And then I find myself very excited to open up a new package of something. So, but using something up, I feel like I was a smart shopper. I got my money's worth out of it and I enjoyed it and I had fun with it. And now I'm ready to get something new. I feel like it gives me permission. So we're putting those flowers on and now we are going to add our leaves. And I'm gonna peel off the teeny tiny layer paper here. So my Stampin' Up! pre-order is arriving on Thursday and I'm so excited because it has all the new in color products. And the reason I got them is because my reward code this month is a free in color sampler pack. You spend $50 in my online store before shipping and tax and you use that reward code, which you type it in the host code box on the shopping uh, cart screen, and I'll send you a free in color sampler pack. I'm getting the cardstock, I've got enamel dots, I've got ribbon, I forget what else I have in there too. But I can put it in a new catalog package for you. So let me know if you want a catalog package or just go ahead and order and I will know that you automatically want one and I'll send it to you. You won't even have to do anything. So, fun, fun. Who couldn't use some Happy Meal right now? Some retail therapy. I was out and about, and I think the stores are allowed to be open around here, and they're just not. I don't know why. Going to Giant Eagle, as much as I like my local Giant Eagle, it's not my idea of retail therapy. And there's no flower. <laughs> 
I can't bake. Okay, so shh, again, don't call the stamping police on me, but I'm going to use a celebration set sending you thoughts. It's from the celebration that just happened. So actually quite a few of you probably already have this and I'm using that little tiny thanks, but any sentiment will work. Look at your own stash. See what you've got. Okay, let's use Blackberry Bliss. Let's use Blackberry Bliss. Oh, hi, Jane. I am so excited that you guys are coming over tomorrow. I have really missed my library classes, and I didn't know if anybody would want to actually come to my house for an official class. So my mom and Jane come over and stamp with me once a month. It's just for fun. We've been doing this for like six or seven years and Jane's actually on my team of Joyful Stampers. So if you join my team, you can come over and stamp for free too. We do it once a month and it's really fun. So you can send me an email if you're interested. Okay, now I told you about that little spot right there and how I was gonna fix it. I'm taking a Blackberry Bliss marker and I'm gonna use the brush tip. Not, it's not, this technique's not gonna work with this, this little fine point side. You want the brush tip and you're gonna take the cap and you're going to flick it. And the ink from this marker is gonna splatter on my cardstock, or on my card. Let me move that out of the way and I'll show you just flick, 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 and flick again. There we go. I don't know when to stop. Um, one more, okay, there we go. More is more when it comes to cards. That's my motto. I mean, I know there's a place for quick and easy and simple cards, but I'm gonna be honest, I struggle with them. I like piling the stuff on. Now these are sequins and they are part of the Peaceful Poppies product suite. And I'm gonna use a fine tip glue pen if I can open it. I think I glued it shut. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna use a fine tip glue pen to add some on here and this is another instance where you don't want to overthink it um, if I didn't have so many of these things in the way what I actually normally do is I take a little pinch of the sequins and I will just release it and drop it all over my card and wherever they land is where I glue it but I'm not gonna do that this time because I've got all of um, those elements on there but what I will do is Pick some up and I'm just gonna put them where I think they should go. Okay, so I have to tell you while I'm doing this, I have a super fun stamping event planned for Friday night. You have to come to it. I'm so excited for it. It's called Mystery Stamping Hour. And if you've never heard, this is, by the way, it's a completely free event. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to pay anything to play. I just want you to have fun because I like this so much. But I created a Facebook group and it's called mystery stamping hour with the joyful stamper so you just go to that mystery stamping hour with the joyful stamper hit that little join button at the top of the page and I'll prove you it only takes seconds and I'll get you in and Friday night 8 o'clock Eastern Time be there and what I do is I will post instructions one step at a time. You have no idea what you're making. You just follow the instructions and at the very, very end, you'll end up with a project that I think you're really gonna like. And then you take a photo and you post it in the comments there and everybody else shows their projects too. And the amazing thing is all the different projects that people come up with and just using the same instructions that I'm posting because people use different stamp sets, they use different papers, they sometimes will even glue things on differently to the to the card or to the other, pro whatever the project is that we're doing. So it's just, it's so much fun. You get good color combination ideas. But tomorrow I'm going to post the supply list for what you'll need for mystery stamping hours. So you'll have two days to gather everything together and I promise it's nothing crazy, nothing fancy. Um, if you're a, you're a basic stamper, you'll have these things. So I'll post that on my blog. I'm going to post it on the Facebook group page and I'm going to post the supply list. I'm going to send it out in an email and Friday night, 8 PM mystery stamping hour with a joyful stamper. That's the Facebook group page that I'm going to host this on. I really want you to come because I'm excited about it. And 
I forgot what I was going to say. But you can subscribe to my Stampin' News if you want to keep up to date with everything. Make sure that you don't miss out. That way I can bring the information to you and you don't have to worry about remembering it. And you don't have to be sad that you missed something. So you can subscribe to my Stampin' News. That link is actually here on my page too. That turned out pretty good for doing it on the fly, I think. I like that. So I hope you learned something new today. Picked up some little trick that you want to try. I hope you saw how pretty these peaceful poppy elements can be. $6.50 for a package stuffed with little pieces like this. Really good deal. I have other ways I showed on my blog too of how to use these. But the big things I want you to remember is, did you learn something new? And are you going to be there Friday night, mystery stamping hour with a joyful stamper? Can you tell I'm excited? Okay. Well, thank you guys for rolling with us today and the time changed to 11 a.m., although I kind of like this hour. Um, if you have questions or comments, let me know. If you want a catalog package, let me know. And if you want to order, I would so appreciate your business. And don't forget to use that reward code so I can send you a sampler of the new in colors. I think you're going to like them. All right, guys. Happy stamping and happy Tuesday. Bye.